The Baggies Podcast, giving you the latest news, views and opinions on all things Albion. Now available on YouTube, Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Hello Baggies fans and welcome back to the Baggies Podcast. It's another episode, it's episode 36 this week. We've been doing this for quite a while now. But yes, welcome back to the podcast. Welcome to new listeners, wherever you're listening from, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, Spotify, wherever you're from. You're all welcome. But yes, today it's a jam-packed episode, including a very special guest towards the end of the episode. We'll talk more about that in a few minutes. We've got to do a bit of a match reaction, I'm afraid, for Crystal Palace, West Bromwich Albion in a game in which we lost 1-0 to at Selhurst Park. Then we've got another game coming up next week, which is a game against... Ch- actually, that's in a couple of weeks, actually, isn't it? International break time now, thankfully. But yes, we'll be playing Chelsea, so we'll have a little look ahead to that. But there'll be a full match preview coming on my channel in a, a little bit, in a, in a few few weeks' time, I guess, in a, about a week's time. That'll be coming up on my YouTube channel. However, today's special guest is none other than the former West Bromwich Albion fullback, Gianni Zyvaloon, who is a former West Bromwich Albion player, of course, currently playing his football in the Netherlands for Addo Den Haag. But yes, he'll be joining me to chat about his career at West Brom and all the things that he's been doing since, and of course his current career venture at in the top flight of the Netherlands. So yes, very fortunate to have Gianni join me for the podcast. But yes, well, you can hear that interview later on in the episode. But first, here we go, it's time for some match reaction. But if you're new around here, make sure you're following the channel, make sure you're subscribing, following, leaving us a nice... Re- if you're on Apple Podcasts, by the way, if you're on Apple Podcasts, leave, why not just go on to the bottom of the podcast and you can leave us a nice review. Tell me what you think. Tell me if you're enjoying things. Tell me if you're not enjoying things. Leave us a one star and tell me how awful the podcast is, if you prefer. However, it's now time to get into episode 36 of the Baggies podcast. Let's go. Crystal Palace, West Bromwich Albion. Oh, it just sounds like a tasty affair when you look at it like that. A game in which I think both sides were pretty, pretty poor. Yeah, I, I, I'd go as far as to say awful, actually. It was genuinely a terrible game, one in which was separated by a penalty from Luka Milivojevic after a Darnell Furlong handball. And I think it's almost identical to the one against Man United that Furlong gave away. Same similar position, same leading his elbow out. It's just silly, silly. No arguments from me. It's a penalty all day long in the modern game and probably in most other most other areas of the game as well. He's obviously leant towards it. It's stupid. It was a tame, tame cross that was just going to go probably out player into the keeper's arms or somebody else would have cleared it. It was just a tame cross. No need for it. And that's what ended up costing us the game. However, I've got no complaints about losing because of how bad we were. I mean, I think a draw might have been a fair result, might have been a more fair result, but I've got no excuses for us. I've got no, you know, oh, we had all these chances and whatnot. Did we? No, we didn't. We were awful. We are absolutely dreadful. It is laughable. I think if I read out what I tweeted at the end of the game, because I do a little full-time thing and just a brief summary of the game, Full-time, a genuinely laughable performance from Albion today. No intensity, no passion and no urgency. A draw is probably fair, but we are fully deserving of our position at the moment. Yeah, I think there was no intensity, no passion, no urgency. I think I, I thought my former self has put it perfectly there. I think that we just didn't get on the ball. We, we got on the ball, but where's the quality in the final third? Your defence looks absolutely really good. I think next year I'm looking forward to seeing, um, seeing these Saying exactly the same players, maybe not Johnston, but you know that defence is going to look really solid. I could see us potentially, um, you know, going up again next season. But I think it, you know, that the, just the defence is working, but the attack's just not. I mean, he, Big Sam's tactics have got to be questioned today. I'm afraid. I, I actually said a couple of episodes. I wouldn't mind Sam in the championship. He'd probably be a really, really, you know, he knows the game. He knows the game in English football. He knows the score. He knows exactly what he needs to do to get the best from his from his players. And quite frankly, he's he's, he's been getting quite. Get, he's made a considerable improvement with these West Brom players. But I would probably argue that he's got us back to the point where we were with Billich, where we were playing well. But he's had to get four signings in to help him along. So yeah, that would be where I stand on that on that particular. That particular um, uh, issue, but I think Big Sam, I, th- I, I, he looked a dejected figure. I think he's waiting to be sacked. If I'm being completely honest, there's no way that that man is taking things seriously. Left his chair, I think, like twice in the first half, and then nine times in the second half. I mean, it's genuinely laughable. He was just sat slumped in his seat all game. I, I don't blame him. I'd be pretty dejected if, if, if um, you know, the team 
were in this position that they, if my team were in the position that they are, and they are my team. But yeah, if my, if I was managing a team that are in the same position, I'd feel pretty de- dejected. But he just sat there. He just sat there with his like like mask halfway on his face, and then just just like sort of just staring at everything. I mean, it's yeah, it's pretty embarrassing from from Big Sam. I mean. He's clearly got things completely wrong at the start of his West Brom career. I said I'd judge him after. I think I said I'd judge him after January because you know that's not his team that he's working with really beforehand. But you know the, he's failed in to win games. He's failing to get results. I think the game can move on from Big Sam, and I can only take great pleasure in seeing his hundred percent survival record being stripped from him at the moment. But in terms of you know the way he, he, he's handled his tactics at the start of the game, handles his tactics perfectly, puts the best team out there in my opinion. But when it gets to about 60, the substitutes he makes, Callum Robinson, what that man has done to not be on the pitch, I will never, ever know. For me, he is a hard worker. He tries his best. He might not be the most technically astute player, but he's certainly working hard and would definitely work well with Diagne up front. But Carnu comes on instead. How Robson Carnu, who I personally think would, would be an OK player in the Championship and an outstanding League One player, is playing Premier League football and coming on to try and be our saving grace in this particular game. Snodgrass, fair enough, might whip across into the box that lands on somebody's head. But you can see the loss in confidence in these players on the pitch. Diagne, you see the XG, he's had the expected goals four and a half, and then he scored one from that. He's lost his confidence. Did he get into any of those situations yesterday? No, he didn't, because he's lost his confidence. He's lost his belief. This team is not put. Sam is not putting enough men forward to try and create chances. There's no. There's no variety in our, our attacking play. It's not like one minute we're crossing, next minute we're threading through balls through. Uh, it's just constant barraging crosses that are just going over and back over and back over. We've got a tendency also to just not hit the ball when it needs to be struck. We just seem to pansy about with it, and then oh god, the goalkeeper's come and and, and, and collected that. Oh, we were in a good position there. We just need to smack the ball sometimes and and take our chances. But in terms of um, in terms of our lineup, we went for another unchanged one: Johnston in goal, Townsend, Bartley, O'Shea, Furlong, Jokerschlu, Pereira, Maitland, Niles, Gallagher, Phillips, and Diagne. Johnston in goal made a really good stop from Benteke. Thought he uh, had a very solid game himself. Bartley made a couple of good tackles, but was just as solid as ever. I think um, he's a he's a good player. Bartley he's really improved this season. O'Shea also really improved, really done well since stepping into the centre back fold for for Albion. Uh, Dono Furlong, it's just just a silly, silly like just penalty to give away. He seems like he hasn't got very much common sense. Like it seems like he's just not aware sometimes of what's going on. Good player, but just not not on it yesterday. Townsend decent, I think yesterday put some nice crosses into the box. I'd like to see him potentially. Being our, definitely being our starting left back in the championship. Jokushlu, what can I say about this man? How we've even got him at the club? I mean, I said it last week. He's an outstanding footballer. Outstanding. And I can see him playing European football next season. He was absolutely incredible. Pereira lost cause out there today. I think he is really, really off the boil. I'm a bit worried about him, actually, because he just looks moody, stroppy. He just looks like he's got no... He just hasn't got the ability to see what he's doing, like know what he's doing. Like he just looks dejected, looks out of sorts, just not not on it for me. Maitland Niles a weird weird player. I mean, he just doesn't doesn't really fill me with confidence. Gallagher runs around, does his best, tries his hard. Maitland Niles for me just doesn't put the right final balls balls in for me. I, th- I think a quality footballer like himself should be doing better with some of the opportunities he has to pass. Phillips, all right actually. I think he, you know, he, he he put some decent crosses into the box. But, yeah, I think it was his birthday yesterday. But, yeah, I think he, I don't think he was that bad, to be honest. Um, Diagne, yeah, not he, he was, he's good linking up, actually, I think. I think he was really good when he was linking up the play. As for coming off the bench, Snodgrass and Carney, nothing much to say. Carney just came on, had a bit of a tussle with the centre-backs and then ended the game. But, yeah, that's the lineup. <laughs> Those are my thoughts on the lineup. Not Not a great performance. Uh, I think we need to plan for next season now. It's the international break. Why not? Just get things done. Just get things done. Get what you want for next season starting now. So if that's bringing any, uh, another manager, so be it. But it would make, make absolutely no sense for Big Sam to still be in charge 
if you're going, if you unless he's going to be the manager next season, that is. Uh, you know, if he's just staying in charge, what are you doing? You're just wasting time. You're just wasting opportunities for rebuilding now. So if Big Sam is not going to be your manager next season, he needs to go now. He needs to he needs to leave. If he is, I, I'm not a fan of that appointment. But if that's going to be the case, then just leave. You know, just, you know, leave him here until the, until next season. That's fine if that's your choice. But you need to make your decision now. Is that going to be? Is he going to be your manager, or is somebody else going to come in? I think. In terms of uh, managerial candidates, Chris Wilder got sacked from Sheffield United. He's been mentioned. Apparently, we wanted him before we had Billich. But yeah, I could, I'd like to. I wouldn't mind Chris Wilder. The only problem is when once you throw a bit of money at him, things become a bit difficult with Chris Wilder. I think he doesn't turn into the manager that you want. Obviously, wasting money on Brewster Burke. Uh, I'd probably call McBurney a bit of a bit of an over overspending. Uh, but yeah, that that's sort of what I think about she Sheffield United. They've got Paul Hakenbot in charge at the moment. But yeah, I think if you start to look at managerial candidates, I'm not really sure if there's any that suit the Albion. Maybe Eddie Howe, but he, he won't want to manage us. Why would he? he? He's probably fine at the moment. But yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what we do. But if you're not, man if you're not having Sam Allardyce as your manager now, he's got to go. He's got to go now. You know, next season, this time now is just being wasted. At least you can't you can't really afford to just slump into next season the way you're going. But yeah, that's my thoughts. Those are my thoughts on the Crystal Palace game. Those are my thoughts. If Sam Allardyce is your, is your manager next season, keep him. If he isn't, let him go now. Wait, don't waste your time. Just say thank you for your efforts, Sam. Thank you, little Sam, as well, just for just for having a go at trying to save us. But you you failed. It's time to go. It is time to go for Big Sam. If that's not your choice for next season, but yeah, those are my thoughts. In terms of Chelsea, I don't think I can give much of a, you know, an analysis until we get closer to the time. I think our, the game against them is on the third of April, if I'm right in thinking. I don't think we've we've got a game until until then. Uh, I think that's going to be a difficult one. It depends who's in charge. I think if we've got a new manager in charge, they might see a bit. You might see a bit of a boost. But yeah, in terms of Chelsea, I, I think they're they're a difficult opponent. The different kettle of fish under Tuchel. I think they'll be difficult and I think we'll have to work very hard to beat them. But it's the first big team we've played for, for a few matches now. But yeah, this will be interesting to see if we can we can try, sort of tussle Chelsea. We won't score three goals against them like last time, to be honest. But we might as well have a little bit of a go. But yeah, that, that, I, I can't really give an accurate match prediction. But yeah, if you want to go and check out the match preview for that, it'll be up on the channel, at the YouTube channel in a couple of weeks, in, in about a week's time or so. So make sure you're checking that out and make sure you're keeping involved with that. But yeah, that's my thoughts on the Chelsea game. <laughs> They're a different kettle of fish under Tuchel and they'll be difficult to play. But yeah, it'll be interesting to see how we get on and if we indeed have a new manager by then. I'd like to, if that's not the plan, if we're not planning on having Big Sam. But yeah, we will certainly see in a couple of games' time. It is now time to welcome a special guest to the Baggies podcast. It's Gianni Zyvaloon, former West Bromwich Albion fullback and Netherlands under-21 international. Of course, it was a fantastic pleasure to speak to him. Uh, yeah, He's shared some very good memories of his time at West Brom, and obviously that's really nice to hear him having such fond memories of West Brom. And yes, yeah, a quite interesting career from him. So yes, it was fantastic to have him on, and I'd like to thank him very much for coming on. But yes, here is my chat with Gianni Zyvaloon. If you want to go and follow him on Instagram, Twitter, the links will be in the description. But yes, go and check out my interview with Gianni Zyvaloon. Here it is. This week's episode of the Baggies podcast sees us joined by yet another former West Bromwich Albion player. This week, it's Gianni Zyvaloon, who is a former West Brom player and former Dutch under-21 international. Gianni, how are you? I'm very well. Thank you very much. How are you? I'm very well. Firstly, thank you very much for joining us on this episode. It's fantastic to have you here. You played 65 times for West Bromwich Albion and you scored, you scored four goals throughout your time at the Albion. You also made 22 appearances for the Dutch under-21 team. But if we take a, a look back at the sort of the start of your career when you were growing up, uh, wh when you were growing up, was, was football always something that you wanted to do? Was that always a, a dream of yours? Um, well, when I was four years old, um, I was doing karate. Mm -hmm. And, and um, uh, by the time I was five or six, I think, um, I told my mom that I wanted to be a football player. And, um, well, she, she didn't know uh, much about football because I was living alone with her. And, um, and she just opened the phone book and she saw, uh, she saw Feyenoord. Mm -hmm. That's um, one of the biggest clubs in, in Holland. And, uh, yeah, she gave them a call and I could uh, go there for a trial. 
and uh, yeah, before I knew, uh, they took me for an uh, for a trial, and I did well. So I went to the academy over there. Mm-hmm. And you were you you signed obviously you say you signed for finals. You signed when you were you were six or seven, was it? Um, when you yeah. signed for final. What was yeah. that like? Because obviously that final academies produced some fantastic talents, and obviously I think Robin Van Persie's the one that sticks out for me as a real talent to come through. And of course yourself. But um, yeah. what what were your thoughts when you first joined the final academy? Was it you know a, a really good experience for you? It was a wonderful experience. Um, well, in my family, everybody was uh, was an Ajax fan. So uh, <laughs> when I went to Feyenoord, everybody was like, why are you going to Feyenoord? Ajax is the best club in Holland. But, um, but I really enjoyed, um, yeah, my whole, um, how long did I stay there? I, I, I made my debut when I was 17. So I think I stayed there for 11 or 12 years. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think uh, back then it was one of the, the best academies in Holland. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it may be the footballer who I am today. So I'm, I'm, I was very pleased and happy that I was, was, um, that I was there at Feyenoord and um, grateful what they've done for me as well. Yeah, I had um, a, another West Brom, former West Brom player. His, his name's Richard Sneaks. He was from the 90s. I, 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 don't, I don't think you'll, you'll be able to remember him, but he, um, he played in the Ajax Academy. Uh, and he spoke how highly of it, uh, you know, about the Dutch academy system and how well it develops the players. Would would you say that's a that's a similar thing for you? Yeah, definitely. I I, I when I just signed for uh, for West Brom, Richard he uh, he sent me a message. Oh yeah, yeah, and um, he told me if I if I uh, if I needed uh, anything, I could uh, I could call him whenever I wanted. So, um, but I really I agree with him. I think one of the Dutch uh, academies. Um, I think they are one of the best uh, in the world. I would say, especially uh, Feyenoord and Ajax. They're yeah, one of the best. Yeah, I, I definitely think so. Yeah, I think obviously Ajax and Feyenoord have produced some fantastic talents. And and you made your debut in two thousand and four against yeah. Wilhelm. What was that making your debut experience like for you in in the first team? Um, yeah, it was, yeah, it was, of course, it was wonderful. I was very young. I was 70 years old and, um, I, I made my debut. Um, um, I didn't really expect it that, that I was going to make my debut by then. Um, and yeah, it was, it was, um, playing as a kid in a grown man's world. So it was, it was very difficult, um, because I was physically not that strong by then. Uh, back then and um, um, for me it was difficult but I really really enjoyed it and uh, yeah, all the players in the team they were really supporting me as well so that made it a little bit easier for me to play my game and um, I was yeah, lucky enough that, um, that we had a really good team so I could fit in very easily. Mm-hmm. Yes, and you, uh, Rude Hullet gave you your 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 final debut. Uh, obviously, yeah. he's quite a well known figure here over in England. Obviously, his days at Chelsea, and I think he managed managed Newcastle for a little bit. Um, yeah. What was he like as a was What was he like as a manager? Because obviously, you came in for your debut because I think somebody else got injured. Was was that is that right? Yeah, correct, correct. One of my uh, uh, teammates in the in the youth academy, uh, he got injured. And um, I, I just signed my youth contract, I don't know, two months before I made my debut. So uh, um, it, it was not really, they didn't really plan for me to make my de- debut so early, uh, but he got injured and I had the chance to, um, to, to play with the big boys. And um, I think uh, Ruth Killett was, was, yeah, was the right manager at that time. Uh, he gave me confidence. But he, he also told me to to finish my school as well, mm-hmm. and um, yeah, I think he was a very good manager, uh, a, a people's manager as well. And um, uh, I still, I'm, I'm till this day, I still um, uh, have some, have some contact with him as well. Um, mm-hmm. I think he's a really good person, also. Uh, yeah, back then, also a really good coach. Yeah, definitely. I think a lot of players who have played under Rude have, have, have echoed what, what you've said there. Um, so when you were, obviously, when you were growing up and when you were making your debut for final, did you 
look up to anybody in particular? Was there a player or a fellow footballer that, or even just a figure in your life that perhaps you look towards to, for inspiration? Yeah. Um, well, the, the, my whole youth, I played as a central defender. But oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, but like I said, when I, um, uh, when I first, when I played my first minutes in the, in the first team, um, physically, I wasn't ready to play as a central defender. Um, and uh, that's why they, they played me right back uh, mm -hmm. to, to, to develop uh, a little bit more. Uh, but back in the days, Maldini, I don't know if you still remember him. Yes, yeah, of course, Paolo <laughs> Maldini. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah he was uh, one of my, uh, my role models, models the, one, the ones who I looked up to. So, um, yeah. It was him. Yeah, what a, what a player, Paolo Maldini. But um, where you you went on loan for a little bit. Um, I'm not sure how you pronounce it. Forgive me if I get it wrong. To Val Valvik, is that is that how you say it? Is that, yeah. Is that how you say it? So so was that? A, okay, you you went, you, right. Yeah, you went there to get some more game time. Is is that is that right? What was that? Was that a challenging experience having to move on to somewhere on loan to get to get that the game time that you needed? Um. No, I think I think it was a very very good time, um, and it was uh, you know the club was was there wasn't so much of um, pressure over there or there was no pressure at all, so it, it was really good for me um, uh, to play there without pressure, and I was also playing at a different position as well over there. Mm -hmm. I played as a as a right midfielder, mm -hmm. um, and and that suited me. Um, at that moment, very well, mm -hmm. uh, because um, uh, Inter Milan was was uh, was interested uh, by then to okay. sign me as a, as a midfielder. Um, but I wanted to stay a little bit longer in Holland. But I knew that um, uh, for me to uh, get to a higher level, um, uh, I had to play at the at the right back position again. Yeah, so and. Um... Yeah, and you were you you then moved to Heravine uh, after yeah. that loan spell, didn't you? Obviously, you've yeah. been at final since you were you were six or seven, as we said earlier. Was that difficult move, moving on, or was it something that you you really relished and, and enjoyed? Um, well, of course, you you find it was the club where I uh, spent my whole youth. Um, I was also born in Rotterdam, so it's always an honor to play for uh, the club where you've uh, played your whole youth and you the, the, the city where you grew up in. So um, you wanted to play, you want to play for that club as long as possible. But um, I mean, as a football player, you need to, um, if one door closes, you need to open another one. So, um, mm -hmm. so if that means that you have to move on and go to a different club, where you uh, can develop yourself and you can get, be a, a better player, then that's what you have to do. And um, um, I mean, I, I had a lot of clubs in my career already, <laughs> so um, uh, I didn't have no hard feelings or I didn't have any 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 problems to move on. Yeah, and um, after that spell at spell at Herevin, um, I remember obviously joining West Bromwich Albion. I remember, I think Manchester United were, were quite interested in, with you at the time. And a lot of yeah. European clubs, you mentioned AC Milan there. Was that something that, did that increase the pressure that, that, that it had on you to, to perform? Or obviously, before we talk about going on to move to West Brom, but obviously, did that interest yeah. put pressure on you whilst you were playing for Herovin? Um, no, no, not at all. I mean, um, you know, when you're young, um, you play with, um, I mean, zero pressure. I think mm -hmm. you just play because you enjoy football and um, you have no pressure from the outside or you have no uh, thoughts about paying bills or kids or families, you know, so you just enjoy playing. Um, and as long as you have um, uh, zero things on your mind, you just enjoy playing and do what you do best. You know, so, um, and I also had the European Championship on the 21s as well. And I also played there uh, uh, a wonderful tournament, a good tournament. 
um, so this is why this was the reason why all the interest is, uh, interest uh, increased. Yeah, and you didn't choose to go to Manchester United or AC Milan in the end. You you actually chose to go to West Bromwich Albion. How did that move come about, and and what were your thoughts when you first joined? Well, the interest from Manchester United came when I played for West Brom. Uh, oh yeah, after, yeah. After after six months, but um, uh, when I signed for uh, for West Brom, uh, I could I could sign for I think three or four um, other clubs. Um, one of the clubs was uh, uh, Sevilla in in Spain. Yeah. Um, but uh, uh, the thing was was that. Um, What's his name again? The right back from Barcelona. Um, uh, back in the days. Oh my days! This Brazilian guy. Um, that would that be my con? My con at the time. Would, would that? Oh, would that the be? other guy, Alves, Danny Alves. Danny Alves, yeah. Yes, Danny Alves was was um, um, he was playing for Sevilla um, uh, when when they were interested in me. So my agent said, "Listen, if you go to Sofia, the chance that you're going to play is is very small." Mm -hmm. So um, I really wanted to go to the Premier League, and West Brom was one of the teams that um, that were interested in in, in the Premier League. And um, well, they 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 spoke with so much confidence uh, 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 with me. So this is why I I made the move to uh, to West Brom, and I mean the thoughts. The coach uh, Tony Mowbray, he was he was such a good guy. Uh, I had a couple of conversations with him, and uh, he gave he gave me so much um, confidence, um, and also from the um, technical director as well. So this is why I I uh, made the move to West Brom. Mm -hmm. And um, you made your you made your debut, I think, in a game against Everton. I think we lost lost that particular game. But what was it like making your your debut for, for West Bromwich Albion? Um, yeah, it was wonderful. I mean, I've always uh, dreamed about playing in the Premier League um, in full stadiums with amazing fans, with the wonderful pitches. Um, and uh, I mean, I was on I was on cloud nine. Um, um, already because I just played uh, um, the Olympics in, in, in China yeah. 2008 as well I think um, so I was in a, in a, in a roller coaster actually uh, everything went so fast uh, so I came back from the Olympics and straight away I, I think a couple of days after I landed in, in Birmingham I had to play the game against, uh, against Everton so it all went so fast but um, um, I think now, after all these years, you start to realize how amazing that period was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah so, if I if I think about that um, that particular game, I can still remember also the goal that they scored mm -hmm. went through my legs. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, but the feeling that you are a Premier League player, that you are a West Bromwich Albion player, that was just amazing it still is actually yeah obviously the premier league is i think up there with with the top spanish division is you know where, where play, a lot of players wanted to be when you joined the premier league and when you were obviously got a bit more experienced at playing premier league football how did you think the standard of football and sort of the style of things in the premier league was different to what you'd experienced in in holland before well the the, the pace was a lot faster than in holland Mm -hmm. uh, it was much more physical. Uh, um, I don't know, two, three, four levels higher than it was in Holland. Um, but I was lucky that I, that I didn't have um, that I didn't have much time to um, to adapt to the style of playing, um, and I was very very happy with that because otherwise. Um, it would have been a very difficult season, you know, but, yeah. um, but also, like I said, because I've, um, it all went so good when I was, since I was 19, 20, 21. So um, it just went by itself, to be honest, mm -hmm. uh, especially the first couple of, of games. I think I was also, um, um, as a right, as a right back, I was, I was man of the match a couple of times as well. Um, 
so yeah i think i was i was lucky uh, to to adapt so quick yeah yeah i think i think a lot of people saw that you were a really bright bright spark in, in sort of that, that West Bromwich team which which I think when we got we went we went down and got relegated in that in that season. You mentioned Tony Mowbray, who obviously a lot of fans really love here at the Albion and I, I think <laughs> you remember do you remember Marc Antoine Fortune? Uh, do you remember awesome. playing yeah I, speak speaking to him <laughs> Yeah speaking to him he was he really loves Tony Mowbray. I, I remember him saying he was his favourite manager in his whole career. What what did you think because, of Tony? Because he um uh, he he took him with him to I think yeah, Middlesbrough and Celtic. Of course, he's one of his <laughs> best coaches. <laughs> how did how did you find um, working under Tony? Was was he a good manager? Yeah, I think he was. I think he was definitely um, a really good manager. And um, um, you know, there's so much pressure in uh, in the Premier League, and especially that year because we had a really young team, um, and. If I could remember it well, they um, they had a, a limited amount of budget that they that they could have spent. So um, it's it's now these days they could spend whatever they want. I think, but but back in the days, um, uh, they wanted to do with uh, uh, with not a lot of money. So um, so there was so much pressure in the Premier League, and uh, we didn't want to relegate straight away. Um, but, but Tony Mowbray, he was always happy. He was always smiling. Um, he was always honest to his players as well. Um, and he also he always tried to play football um, because that was that was what Albion was West Brom's Albion was standing for playing football. Um, so I, I think if I remember it good, they called us the the Arsenal from the. Midlands, I think. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, I, I think he was a very, still is a very good guy. Yeah, yeah. And a good man. Yeah, yeah. he's he, he's at Blackburn at the moment. I think they're doing really, really well in the in the championship. Uh, yeah, I've got them playing some some really nice football. Um, yeah. But in, in terms of you came, you obviously we got relegated, and then you played your football in the championship for a little bit. I think you'd have been under Roberto Di Matteo at, at that point. Yeah. But how did obviously he he's gone on to win the Champions League with with Chelsea? How did you find him him as a coach? Was was, was he good? Um, yeah, he was he was a good coach. Um, but uh, I think, like I said, also in the championship, there's a lot of pressure and I think that's one of the reasons why he's not a coach anymore because um is he still a coach no he, right I, I, I'm not sure I'm not sure no, I'm not sure uh, what he's up to at the moment no because if, if I remember it good he was under a lot of pressure before after game before every every game and after a game as well mm -hmm. uh, but he did well he did he did well on, um, uh, we promoted under him uh, and we played we also played some good football Mm -hmm. Under him, and then I think I think then he went to Chelsea. Yeah. Um, but um, I also liked his uh, his assistant coach. Oh my days! I forgot his his name. Uh, um, I've, I'm not sure who would have been the assistant coach then. Um, I think it'd probably be too early for Keith Downing at that point. I think it'd be too. No, early. no, no. It's not him. It was yeah. not him. Anyways, I loved his assistant coach as well, and they did a very, very, uh, very good job. Yeah, and, yeah. and you got promoted, obviously, as you said. What was that experience like getting getting promoted back to the Premier League? Obviously, that's where you wanted to be, and that's where the team wanted yeah. to be. What was it like yeah. getting promoted back there? Um, well, if I if I remember it good, still, then we had a very um, and uh, I think four or five games before the end of the season, we were already promoted with Newcastle, if I remember yeah. it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So um, uh, it was a very good season. We almost, we won, almost won every game or we, or we, or we, um, we drew. So it was a, it was a good season. And um, of course it was difficult. Um, back then in the, in the Champions League, it was a lot of uh, uh, championship. It was a lot of kick and rush and long balls. And we were, yeah. Uh, together with um, with Newcastle, the only team that play football, and 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 uh, the other teams uh, found that really difficult to play against. So 
um, yeah, we had a very good season and was a, yeah, was, was just enjoying that season. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and you were you were obviously a key player in, in that ex, in that experience in the championship. Uh, what was what, how was it like uh, in terms of your presence in the squad? Obviously, you know what was it like being part of that squad that that went up. Um, yeah, we had a we had a real team. Um, everybody knew each other very well. Um, uh, a part of the squad did things together outside uh, the pitch as well. We went um, uh, we went for dinners. Uh, um, we also went to parties together. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think if you do those things as a team, um, the performance on the pitch. Uh, it will be better as well because you are willing to fight for each other. You are willing to do whatever it takes uh, mm-hmm. because yeah, you are you are friends, and I think that's one of the reasons why we performed so well in the in the championship. Then, um, obviously, I was I was a little bit disappointed in the beginning of the of the season because um, uh, there was so much so much uh, interest from other teams in the in the in the Premier League as well, but. West Brom wanted me to stay because they they told me that um, they wanted to uh, uh, straight away go up again to the to the yeah. to the Premier League and they needed me for that. So, um, but um, I think after a week or so or two weeks, I was um, I was fully focused on the on the season in the Championship and I was uh, I was really happy to be there. It was also a, a nice experience as well. Mm-hmm. And you, you played with so many fantastic players during your time at, at West Bromwich Albion. I, yeah. I think, yeah, there's quite quite a few. I think Greening was, you know, a, a really important player. Uh, Brunty yeah. will have been will have been around at that time, just having joined the club a few years ago. Who obviously don't don't you know don't pick those players if you don't want to. But yeah. obviously, um, who who did you enjoy playing with during your time at West Bromwich in the Premier League and Championship? Feel free to give a list or something of, of the players you enjoyed playing with but um well well my friends uh what yeah the 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 guys um who i was always with were uh luke moore ishmael miller mm-hmm. um who else um oh my days i forgot his name it's unbelievable um Wow, that's really bad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Peter Oden Wingy. Yeah. Um, what's the French guy? He also always played in the midfield. Um, small guy. Oh my days. Um, uh, um, I think I remember we had. If I reel off a few players that we had in that time, we had like Robert. We had Robert Corrin in in the midfield in that in that time. We had. Uh, Probably had Jerome Thomas around that time. We had Marek Czech. I Jerome think. Thomas he was one of my good friends as well. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, go on, go on. <laughs> uh, we had oh, we had uh, Abdullah Mate at, at centre back. I remember. Um, yeah. We had Mark Antoine Fortuné up front. You mentioned you're you're yeah. still you're still very good friends with. Uh, yeah. Who else do we have? Here we go. I have it here. Uh, <laughs> Giles Barnes. He's. I'm, I'm yeah. still in contact with Giles Barnes as well. Uh, Youssef Molumbu. That's the one. That's who him. I yeah. 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 Um, Ruben Reed. Um, yeah. But I think I think one of the best players that I've played with, and I don't know if he's still playing, but uh, it was Borja Falero. Yeah, he still play. He plays for Fiorentina in in, still, yeah. in Italy. Top top level yeah. Italian football. I yeah, think this, a lot of Albion fans remember him. This guy, um, uh, it was um, because uh, he was too small and not powerful, not physical, not 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 good enough to play in the uh, to play in the Premier League. But the moment he went to he went back to Mallorca and then he went to Villarreal and then he went to uh, to Italy, yeah. Um, when I when I played with him in at West Brom, you straight away saw that he was top quality. So I think Borja Valero was one of the best players I've played with there. Yeah, I think yeah, lots of West Brom players. Obviously, he's still producing it at top top level now. He, I think he played yeah. for Inter Milan for a bit before joining yeah. Fiorentina, but he's 
he's really kicked on from from playing in the West Brom West Brom team. Um, yeah. Do you have a, a favourite um, moment or match at West Brom when when you played for us? Do you have a, a favourite favourite bit of your time there? Um, wow, <laughs> we've had so many so many great games. Um, well, of, obviously my my debut against Everton. Um, I think uh, the game against Arsenal at home. Um, mm -hmm. I think the the cup game against Manchester City where I scored. Mm -hmm. um, let me see the the home game against uh, Manchester United, uh, where I played uh, centre back. Yeah, uh, the away game at Fulham, where I also played centre back, it was also a really good game. Um, yeah, what else? I don't know. I, I could <laughs> think of yeah. so many moments, but it was just a great experience. Yeah, well. yeah. I think I think yeah. Those, in, in, especially in that time, that was when I first started being a season ticket holder and going to the games regularly. So I obviously yeah. that was my first sort of experience being thrust into West Brom. But that was honestly an yeah. era that I'll, I'll personally never forget. And um, you obviously feel free to do this over the whole career. Do, do you have a player that you found particularly difficult to play against? Was there, you know, the best yeah. player that you played against? Obviously, you played in different countries, so feel free to talk about yeah. different ones. But um, well, I, I I have to look him up. But there was one game um, where. We played with West Brom against Newcastle United away. And um, I think that he wasn't even the best player in the world. But that game, it was so difficult. It was unbelievable. <laughs> and the pitch, the pitch in Newcastle is also so big. Uh, yeah. But... Um, ...past me. Uh, left and right it was unbelievable <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah I think that's that was one of my worst games as well and one of my well I wouldn't say worst games but it was one of my difficult most difficult games that I've played for West Brom um, and of course I think we played a cup game against um, where I made the mistake and they scored the fastest goal in the cup. I think. Um, oh yeah, yeah. It gave me a really difficult night, <laughs> <laughs> and the game. Um, it felt so long, <laughs> <laughs> but um, but I think that was my most difficult game at, uh, at West Brom, and of course, yeah, the the uh, the game that uh, I made the mistake and they scored the fastest goal in, in the cup. But that was because I, I was not there at the moment. I was not there with my head at the moment. I had some private problems. So um, uh, that was the reason why I made the mistake. Yeah. 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 Uh, well, you, you played in front of the West Brom fans. Obviously, you talked about the Premier League and how the fans and, you know, there's, the atmosphere is, is always fantastic. How did you find the West Brom fans? Uh, you know, were they, were, they, were they nice? I know they can not be so nice at times, but were the, did you take them well? Um. Well, they, they were always nice to me, to be honest. <laughs> um, and uh, I think the, the, the best thing about the fans uh, back then, I think they are still the same, is that um, they knew, especially the, the time that we were about to relegate from the Premier League, of course, they were upset. Um, and they knew that we had a really difficult time. Um, but... I don't know. It felt like they also were at peace at it, and um, they were supporting us until the end and until the last, until the last game in the Premier League. The stadium was still full, and they were still supporting us. Of course, people were mad because we lost a couple of games, but mm -hmm. uh, they were always, they were always there for us, uh, no matter what. And um, I thought that maybe in the Championship that uh, the stadium wouldn't be full. But the first game against Newcastle, mm. the stadium was just full, and I was surprised. And the pitch was still 
amazing and and the support was still there so i think um yeah they were one of the the, the best fans um, um that i know and 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 uh, they were also very always very kind and uh, and supportive so i think yeah this was um they also had a, had a song for me as well so it was really nice <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah I think a lot of fans really receive, received you well. I remember talking to my dad before when I told him I was having you on the show. He was, te- you know, he was saying he, he was he was a player, you know, his time, <laughs> you know, playing at playing at right back. But you, you left West Bromwich Albion for for Mallorca. I, I think that was that was to get a bit more game chances and and chances to play. What was leaving West Brom like? How was that experience for you? Um. Well, West Brom, I think West Brom wanted to give me an, another year. Um, um, but yeah, I, I, maybe, I, I think if I remember it still, uh, is that, um, that the chances that I was going to play were not that big. Mm-hmm. Um, so, um, and then, then Mallorca came. Uh, they were playing in the Primera División, in the highest league in, in, in Spain. So this was also always a dream. Uh, to play there in Spain, I mean, it's a, it's an amazing island, and the life was amazing. So, um, uh, like I said before, uh, as a football player, you always wanted to play at the highest level, and and you always want to play. So, if the chance is there to go to a different uh, competition, a different uh, a league uh, at the highest level, you you should always consider going if the chances at your old club are not um, that high. Uh, but of course, it was. Um, uh, I had the best time of my life over there in in, in at West Brom. Um, I lived uh, in, in Birmingham, uh, in the middle of the city center. So um, uh, of course, it was harsh to leave. But yeah, that's 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 the life of a football player, and um, I always uh, uh, I will always look at West Brom as. Um, yeah, one of my best times in in my career, and I would love to come back. To be honest, <laughs> I think I think I think we could do with you. To be honest, at the moment, but at the moment you're you're playing um you're playing over in Holland. You're actually still you're playing in the Eredivisie. Uh, you're playing for Ado Den Den Haag. Yeah. I think um if if West Brom Albion fans can't you know can't recognise that club name um Alan Pardew, who was our old manager, managed yeah. Den Haag. But ju- I think that was just before just before you came came mm-hmm. there for your second spell. Obviously, yeah. I've seen that you've you've recently. I read, I read an article on the club website that you 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 got injured the other day. Obviously, yeah. how's how's that going for you? And are you going to be back soon? Um, I, I meant like I meant coming back to to watch the game, not as a player, because I'm oh. already 34 years old. So I don't think that's going to happen anymore. But um, yeah, I just I just uh, messed up my my ligaments in my ankle. Uh, so that's going to take me, I don't know, six, seven weeks to come back. Uh, so hopefully, I still, um, um, I can still play some games uh, uh, towards the end of the season. Um, but yeah, it, it will take some time, and and I think with my age, um, um, the recovery also it, it takes a little bit longer. Um, um, but I'm I'm just happy to be uh, to be back um, uh, in Holland. Um, uh, the 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 ride to the club is is like thirty to forty minutes, so I can stay at my place and and enjoy life, enjoy my son, uh, enjoy my own business. So it's it's um it's good like this, yeah. And, and you, uh, Ado Den Haag, at the moment, uh, from looking at the table, they find you, you find yourselves in a similar position to West Brom at the moment, actually, in a bit of a relegation fight, trying to trying to stay in the division, obviously. Uh, Holland works a little bit different to to you know in the Netherlands to how it works in 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 the Premier League. With you have a playoff place, who play yeah. the one of the teams from the division below to see who goes into the top division. Do you think yeah. that you can you can make it out of that out of that relegation zone and try and try and survive? Um, if I'm playing, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean uh, the. I I just signed for uh, for Ado Den Haag um, in November. And I needed some time to get fully fit. Um, so since uh, the end of January, beginning of February, I was I was 100% fit. So I played. Um, I only played two games. 
Um, uh, but I think if I'm back, we still have uh, seven or six games, and and I think we should uh, we should be able to to um, to get out of that um, direct uh, relegation zone uh, and to play the playoffs, or maybe even uh, get out of that that uh, bottom three zone, so we don't even have to play the the playoffs. But everything is possible because we still have like a, a ten to nine, ten games left still. Mm-hmm. Um, um but it it's too early to say at the moment that we uh that we can't fix it anymore yeah well hopefully we see that De- i don't know staying in the eredivisie and hopefully we see west bromwich albion staying uh-huh. in the premier league because obviously not 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 good situations at the moment in league position for for both clubs yeah yeah no, I hope so too. I mean, uh, West Brom is uh, is a fantastic club, and it, they should they should be in the in the Premier League. Um, so hopefully, West Brom stays stays in there as well. And otherwise, yeah. we've done it before. So if we have to relegate, then uh, we will go up as soon as possible. The same year, the, the next year again. Yeah, yeah. I think hopefully that's what if if that if we do end up getting relegated. Hopefully, a lot of West Brom fans will hopefully see. A replication of of what happened during your your time at the club. But Gianni, it's been a, a pleasure having you on the Baggies podcast this week. I'm sure a lot of West Brom fans have enjoyed hearing your your stories and your tales from your career. But it's been a pleasure having you. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure being here. And another player chat comes to an end. We'll have to see who we've got on over the next couple of weeks. But yes, I'm still working on the guests over the next course, uh, next couple of weeks, of course. But yes, Gianni Zavalloon, thank you very much for him to, for coming on the Baggies podcast. It was a pleasure to have him here. I'm sure you guys all enjoyed listening to him and his stories and his memories of his time. But yes, that does indeed bring us to the end of the Baggies podcast. It's been a pleasure having you here. Apologies for having nothing nice to report on, I suppose. I think maybe if we have a new manager by the time the next game comes around, I think it might be nice. But yeah, we'll certainly see about that. But yeah, it'll be nice to see some a bit of change at the club, a bit of ambition, a bit of a plan. And I'd like to see that come pretty quickly, to be honest. But yeah, thank you very much for listening to the podcast this week. It's been a pleasure having you. And if you have enjoyed it, make sure you smash smash a like if you're on YouTube. Drop a follow on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, whatever you're on. Just make sure you're subscribing and dropping a follow to keep updated with all the latest podcasts and other other YouTube ventures. Leave us a review on, on Apple Podcasts and follow me on Twitter at the Baggies Pod or at Louis Ben underscore. You can check either of those out. I'll see you next time on the Baggies Podcast for episode 37. See you next time. Goodbye.